Well, hello. This is part two of taking responsibility for your soul, your thoughts, your desires. Being responsible is one of the most important things that you need to pay attention to. On the journey, you see, we get to that point where we start the journey and it's all exciting and we think it's so wonderful. You know, oh my goodness, uh, I'm so excited to be here and to be doing this. And I'm a spiritual student. I'm really excited about being a spiritual student. Oh yeah, this is great. And I remember feeling that way. Oh, I was so excited when I started on this journey because it was interesting. It was... Uh, a learning capacity that I never knew that I had. But taking responsibility was the sticky point. I liked it when everything was going my way. But when things started falling apart, Jane's world starts to fall apart. Oh, I wonder why that's happening. I meditate every day. I love God. I'm, in spir I'm a spiritual student. Wow, how come this happened? I always meditate three times a day and I just, I, uh, I spend time trying to be kind to people uh, I talk to people at the grocery store and I try to give them love. How can this dastardly thing happen in my life? What, what, what's this in my world, my wonderful world? According to Jane, she didn't like it very well. She was special, very special. I was special to God because I was in spiritual school. And God really loved me. And that was good for me to feel that way. But eventually I had to grow up and be responsible. Just like any child gets a new plaything and enjoys its plaything and looks at it and says, oh, I love my plaything. And it has a great time. But all of a sudden, Daddy and Mommy say, okay, this little bicycle that you have, you need to wash it. It's all dirty. You've been riding it in the mud, Miss Jane. A dirty bicycle? Oh, aren't you going to do that for me, Daddy? I have to wash. What? My goodness. Do I have to do something? Yeah. Mother, Father, God says you are now. You've grown to the place where you can start taking responsibility for your soul. Now that you know you have one and you say, I want to be a spiritual student. And I heard you, Miss Jane. I heard everything you had to say. And I was happy to support you. But now, push comes to shove, Miss Jane. I want you to get on the ball. I want you to start with an observer self that can observe the self and start taking care of the, some of the things in your life that need to be taken care of. Well, gosh, God, what do I need to take care of? I'm a really great person. I do really nice things for people. Well, start observing. Start observing yourself. Oh, okay, that would be fun. Oh my gosh, I get to observe myself. Oh, thank you, God, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Naive as I was, I started 
to make that transition to observe myself. And what I saw, I didn't like very well. I began to see all the little games I played with myself in the name of love or in the name of helping or in the way of getting my way. Yes, indeedy. Here I was in spiritual school. I didn't like what I was seeing very well. It seemed like everything I did during the day, it was like a, a bing, bing, bong. Look at, see it. And I thought, oh my God. My house of consciousness is very dirty. Very, very dirty. There's all kinds of crappy thoughts I have. All kinds of crappy desires that I have. And I thought my great desire was for God. And all of a sudden now, now that I am in spiritual school, I'm looking at all my crappy desires. And I do mean crappy because they weren't going to really help anybody but me. Satisfy my ego. Make me like myself better or make other people like me better. It wasn't fun to look at my house of consciousness and see all the little corners of crap I didn't like very well about myself. And then I had to look at how I measure everybody else. I had this great little measuring stick that they had to measure up to. And if they didn't, they were on my list. I had to look at that and say, what on earth? I am so ashamed of myself. I am so ashamed. It's like God turned the light on me and I had to look at all these things. And what I ended up doing is getting very ashamed of the way I acted and how I always did things for the purpose of Miss Jane to satisfy her ego. And as I learned to be the observer herself, I'm going to tell you, it wasn't very fun, but it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. The greatest. Because had I not seen those things, I would have been tripping through my life never coming to terms with who Jane really was. You see, I would have glossed it over and ended up dying, coming back in another lifetime to take care of all this stuff one more time and not looking at myself again. So I say to you, how many lifetimes have you lived that you never looked at yourself, the real you, deep within you? What have you been stuffing? What are you afraid of? What is your greatest fear? Because when the light is on you, you cannot hide. And I'm warning you right now. If you want to be the observer of self and really see what you're made out of and come to terms with the real self within you, the I am presence, God existing in you, you have to clean out the room. You have to go through and pick up the crap and dissolve it through forgiving it or releasing it or the seven steps are a wonderful way that helped me so much to let go of crap. I had to take myself up the seven steps so many times the first couple years that I thought I couldn't do it one more time only to find out that I continued doing it and I still do it because I'm making changes in my life all the time. I'm always letting go of a portion and letting new come in. And even in God consciousness, I'm going to tell you, 
even in God consciousness, there is a school, so to speak, because you can't grasp everything at one little gulp. You, you go into learning and growing, but you're so different. And I can't even talk to you about how different it is because you have no comprehension. But when you go there, you will know. It's wonderful. I wouldn't go back to being a third dimensional person with all the ego crap and all that stuff. Oh my God. What a heavy burden it was. I was fighting myself all the time. Are you fighting yourself all the time? Are you putting the covers over your head and not looking? I want to move, God. I want to change things. But don't make me do anything. I'll let go and let you, God. I found out letting go and letting God meant that that part of me had to, to do the work. The action had to be taken by me. The reason is because you need to understand your whole soul and not just the little teeny one-tenth of it. You have to have the whole understanding of your whole self because that's what moves up into God consciousness. Not your limited self, your vast self. That's what's going to move into God consciousness. Jesus said, you don't put new wine in old wine bags. I'm going to tell you, God's not going to do that either. In old consciousness, that's what he's talking about. I'm not going to give new information into old consciousness that won't receive it the way it needs to be received. You know, there are very few people on this planet to even care about what we're doing right now. But I'm going to tell you something. More souls are coming in every day. More of them. And they are ready to move into God consciousness. And you can be a leader of that. You can support them by gaining your own God consciousness. Because once you gain God consciousness, even a portion of it, you'll realize that we're all one. We're not separate at all. It's all the same. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Because you don't carry any burdens. You do that which is yours to do. I'm here to teach you and support you. That is mine to do. I can tell you what to do. I can support you in doing it. I, but I can't take responsibility. I can't do that. You have to take it. I can talk to you about it. And I can take the responsibility to sharing what I know to help you. I can take that responsibility. But it's like making smorgasbord dinner. You come to the banquet table, and there's all the possibilities. And you have the ability to go ahead and choose what you want. The dinner is served. I prepare a table before you. Do you want to eat from this table? Do you want to try and meditate? Because on this table is meditation. It's greater understandings about the karmic law. There is taking responsibility. There's the evolution of your soul. There is so many things on this table. And they all belong to you. Yes, indeed. They all belong to you. Are you going to sample a few little things and see if you like it? And say, mm, yeah, I like, kind of like meditation. It feels pretty good. But boy, I sure don't like journaling. That's, that, that I don't want to be bothered with. Oh, I'd love to get up in the Kashuk Records and read them for everybody else, but I don't want to see my own. Because if I do, I might not like what I see. But I sure would like to tell everybody else about it. No. No, no, that will not happen. 
because that kind of attitude will never get you what you want. You surrender to your higher self every single day of the day, every single minute of the day. You say, I want to know you, God, no. I will serve my family. I will serve my children. I will serve my, my city. I will serve my job. I will serve those I love and support spiritually. I will do it. And I will honor my higher self every moment of the day because how can I say I want to be one with God if I don't want to be one with myself? Doesn't work. Absolutely will not work. You can't ask for that because it's not going to happen for you. How can you want and love God with all your heart and not like yourself? We have to make amends with ourself. We have to love and forgive ourselves. Because if we don't, we are never going to be able to receive the higher love. Because we'll push it away. Don't come too close. If you come too close, you might find out that I'm not squeaky clean like I want you to think I am. And I went through that. I know what that is. I absolutely know that. Because every soul does it. I'm not just talking about a few. I'm talking about every soul does it. Don't get too close. I've been in carnation for 500 times. And I have a wall that's so huge, you are not going to get through. I'm going to say, oh, I want to love you. But I got a wall that's not going to let you get through here and, and really love me. Because I don't love myself. And if I don't love myself, I don't want you to love me because it makes me feel dirty. So I'll push you away. I'll, I'll say, come, come, come. Love me. And then as soon as you really love me, I go, poof. I'll reject you before you reject me because I can't afford to let you know what I really am all about. Because you might use it against me. And if you use it against me, then I'll have to build, build a bigger wall. And that wall gets bigger and bigger and stronger and it becomes cement. It becomes cement between you and humanity. Yes. How can we help the world? What can we do? Mainly, we have to do it ourselves, be responsible, and make the changes in ourselves. And consequently, that's going to make changes in the world that you know not of in the moment. You will be able to carry a light. That light will help even if they don't know it. It's like the air. They're breathing the air. And that energy and love of God is just like breathing air. It's there. It always has been and it always will be. God so loved the world that he created a lot of souls because he wanted to have many souls to love and to be loved. Not separate, but love to be loved. I give love, I receive love. Are all very beautiful words. But really doing it, really doing it, will be a project the rest of your life. Will you be unhappy because you did this? that you went on this journey, I guarantee you, I guarantee you with every inch of my beingness, you will not be unhappy. You'll be so glad that you let this go because it's like an albatross around your neck. 
and desires are so hard because they have such a uh, stranglehold on us because it looks so delicious and so tempting. But let us let go of these puny little desires for the greater desire. And those other things will be taken care of. You want to be loved? Well, learn to love yourself. That's the biggest job you'll ever have. Because God loves you. What am I really saying to you? the God in you will come forth and it will be love. It will be love. I can't help but love because it's made of love. It's a vibration and energy that pierces our heart, our soul, our very beingness and has from the very beginning of time. It's always pierced our heart. It's always aflamed our passion. Love makes the world go round, but not the, the jealous love or the, I want you to take care of me or I want to take care of you. And I don't feel like a man or a woman if, you do, if I'm not taking care of you or one way or another. What will end up is that we will take care and love. We will. We absolutely will take care. But on a different dimension for a different purpose. The greater purpose, the greater will of God the great will of God is operative in your heart, your beingness. Because on another dimension, you understand that God is everywhere present. Everywhere. And you are everywhere present with God. I don't know what else to say about that. So I guess I'll end my talk today by saying, check out your desires. Find out what's really important because God will fulfill your desire, whatever it is. If you are desiring a perfect relationship, may God your perfect relationship. and you'll never go wrong. I look forward to talking to you next week as we go on on this journey. My desire for, my, my desire for you is to know yourself and God. Own it, a part of you. That's my desire. And God fulfills my desire. So you will achieve. Because God always fulfills desires. And my desire is that you desire. God and God fulfills that desire. And I'm supporting you all the way to fulfill it. You have somebody here that loves you. That cares about your very essence, your very beingness. It will never get lost. It will always be here and it always has been here. So I say good night as we move forward on our journey together. I'm here for you and I know you're here for me. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>